Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have five stories for you this week. The Department of Commerce opens an investigation into imports of UAS and their components. We have lawmakers calling for an expedited audit of DJI and Autel. We also have Stefanik introducing an amendment to audit all Chinese drones. And then we have a new FA administrator. That's the fourth story, which is crazy. Uh, we also have DJI releasing uh, three new Agris drones. That's kind of the uh, drones for good story this week. Let's get to it. And first up this week, the U.S. Commerce Department has officially launched a what's called Section 232 National Security Investigation into drones and their components with a clear focus on Chinese manufacturers. Uh, the investigation falls under what's called the Trade Exemption Act of 1962, which is giving the government the power to recommend tariffs, quotas, or other restrictions if it finds that imported products are a threat to national security. The probe will look at whether our reliance on foreign-made drones weakens the U.S. supply chain and exposes sensitive data. Uh, there is also a 21-day common period for this investigation that asks several questions. However, these questions are really geared towards manufacturers, but if you are a home builder, you can actually answer some of these questions. We've left a link in the description, so make sure that you go and check it out if you are uh, concerned about this. It's important also to know that this investigation is separate from the story that we're going to be talking about in a second here, which has to do with an audit that is required by the 2025 NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act. So a group of top House Republicans, including Elise Stefanik, who was behind the 2025 NDA, John Molinar and Rick Crawford, have sent a letter to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, that's ODNI for short. They are urging the agency to fast track a national security audit of DJI and Autel Robotics, and they want it to be completed within the next 30 days. Now, this request is tied to a provision in the National Defense Authorization Act. We just talked about this, the 2025 one. Now, that provision requires that specifically DJI and Autel would be placed on the FCC covered list by December 23rd of this year, 2025, unless they are cleared by a national security review. Now, if you want to hear my thoughts on this one, it's going to be in post flights. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, just a little too much for uh, YouTube. This is hosted on the premium community, so we're going to put a link in the description. If the ODNI review finds what they call unacceptable risk, it could trigger rapid rapid regulation action, along with the inclusion on the FCC ent entity list, which would prevent any FCC license from being issued for future drones from DJI and from Autel. Now, DJI has repeatedly denied any affiliation with the Chinese military, and a 2022 Pentagon audit found that there were no malicious codes in their government edition drones. However, the lawmakers behind this push argue that the audit was limited and is now outdated. Uh, this is a developing situation, obviously, but a 30-day timeline is, quite frankly, pretty aggressive. Uh, the last 30-day period that we saw was mandated by Trump's executive order, and it's now two weeks behind and counting with still no result. Uh, it's also very curious, I think, that the lawmakers that are behind the language in the NDA are also the ones that are pushing for this audit to happen. When there is a dead man switch in the language for December of this year, they would basically have nothing to do and then it would just happen. Uh, we're going to keep you updated on this, but um, it smells fishy if you ask me. Now, along the same lines, again, Representative Stefanik uh, introduced an amendment to the 2026 NDA uh, that would require all Chinese drone manufacturers to undergo the same security audit that we just talked about, the same one that DJI and Autel are going to have to go through. Uh, this is not approved yet. This is just a proposal, but the deadline is basically uh, December, uh, January 1st of 2027. If this goes through, these Chinese manufacturers, all of the other ones that are not DJI and Autel, would have to go through an audit by January 1st, 2027. Otherwise, they would risk being added to the uh, entity list. Same deal. And even more news from the U.S. government. Uh, the Senate has confirmed Brian Bedford as the new FA administrator with a 53 to 43 vote. Uh, Bedford is the former CEO of Republic Airways. Uh, he's been tasked with uh, quite a bit. Uh, he's got some challenges coming up, uh, overseeing some uh, issues with modernizing the national uh, air traffic control system and then also integrating drones into the national airspace with the uh, BV loss rules. Uh, Congress has approved a $12.5 billion modernization 
decentralization plan, which Bedford is now fully in charge of implementing. So good luck to him. I hope he succeeds. This is something that we uh, badly, badly need. And next up, some good news. Not so bad news, whatever you want to call it, but DJI rolled out some uh, agricultural drones, three of them to the global market, uh, but not in the US at the moment. Uh, the new models are the Agress T100, the T70P and the T25P. Each of them are designed uh, for different types of farming, different scales of farming. Uh, the Agress T100 is an absolute beast, basically a flying tractor. Uh, it carries 100 liters of payload and then 100 liters of spreading. I know different numbers because different types of quantities, if you want, uh, with a top speed of 20 meters per second. It's twice as efficient as the predecessor. The T70P is a step down, still massive, uh, designed for mid-sized farms. That's a 70 liter spray capacity and then a 100 liter spread capacity. It features DJI's new system. It's called the Safety System 3.0, uh, which combines millimeter wave radar and then also a tri-vision system for better obstacle avoidance in tricky terrain. And finally, we have the Agris T25P, which is built for solo operators or smaller, more complex plots like orchards, for example. Uh, it's compact, foldable, and it packs a uh, 20 kilogram of payload and has a spray rate of 16 liters per minute. It even has the ability to have adjustable dropless sides that are between 50 and 500 micrometer for super precise application. Now, these drones were actually released in China last year, but the global launch uh, is signaling that DJI is pretty serious about getting into the agricultural space uh, anywhere in the world except for the United States. So anybody else, enjoy those drones. And then on Post Flight, uh, our show where we discuss these stories and we share a lot of opinions, especially this week, uh, we're going to be focusing also on the Flight Cart 30 that's been operating at Mount Everest and uh, picking up a lot of trash up there. That's another uh, drone for goods story. So we'll see you in Post Flight. Also, there will be no uh, live on Monday. We're going to be traveling to Oshkosh, but we will be back next Friday for another news update. And in the meantime, fly safe. Don't be that guy and uh, go talk to your representative. They need to hear your side of the story.